The White House is defending the arrangements surrounding Hunter Biden's art sale. Let's hear what Press Secretary Jen Psaki had to say about that. Well, I can tell you that after careful consideration, a system has been established that allows for Hunter Biden to work in his profession within reasonable safeguards. Uh, of course, he has the right to pursue an artistic career, just like any child of a president has the right to pursue a career. Uh, but all interactions regarding the selling of art and the setting of prices uh, will be handled by a professional gallerist adhering to the highest industry standards. So Hunter Biden's exhibition is set to open this fall. His art dealer has set the price range for his work between seventy-five and five hundred thousand dollars. The move is faking backlash from all sides. Former Obama White House ethics chief Walter Schaub shared his thoughts on CNN. They have outsourced government ethics to an art dealer. She mentioned industry standards. It's an industry that's notorious for money laundering. There's no standards in that industry. And the idea that they're going to flag any overly priced offers, well, this is art that hasn't even been juried into a community art sale. How is How are they going to decide what's unreasonable when they've already priced it in the range of 75000 to 500000 for a first outing? What they've done is ensured that neither you nor I nor anyone watching this show will know who buys the art unless they share it publicly. But there's nothing that we can do to monitor to make sure that Hunter Biden or anyone in the White House doesn't find out that the dealer keeps his or her promise, that the buyers don't uh, call the White House, ask for a meeting and say, hey, I just bought the president's son's art for $500,000. Here to weigh in is White House reporter for Real Clear Politics, Philip Wegman. Welcome, Philip. Thanks for having me this morning. So what, what would your opening bid be uh, for, a, for a Hunter <laughs> Biden piece, or would you have to see it first? Because maybe it... It depends on what I'm trying to get out of the deal, of course. I mean, I, I don't understand... Do you, have, do, you have a mer do you have a merger that needs to go through? Yeah. Or, uh... <laughs> I might sometime soon, right? Um, I think what's interesting about all of this is that Politicians always like to paint. Winston Churchill was famous for painting. Same thing with Dwight Eisenhower. George W. Bush also tried with um, much more limited success. But the thing is that those politicians had painting as a pastime. Uh, this certainly seems like painting as a pass-through. And what's frustrating about the entire setup that we're sort of being asked to accept, um, you know, that it's somehow above board, is that the anonymity actually puts a premium on this art because you're going to have the uh, the White House uh, says that they have given this new system its blessing. This art dealer who seems to be a shady character to begin with, uh, they're going to do everything they can to keep this anonymous so that we don't know who is shelling out, um, you know, tens of thousands of dollars to support Hunter Biden's burgeoning art career. Say what you will about Trump Hotel in Washington, D.C., as corrupt as it was. Uh, the difference was that oftentimes you could go there and you could actually see who was doing their best to sort of uh, backhandedly grease the palm of the former administration. This is actually even worse. So there's a fairly, I think, reasonable debate over the value of these paintings. Some art experts actually say they're pretty good and probably worth a good chunk of money. But then the reason this becomes questionable is because Hunter Biden in particular has a history of peddling influence. And it reminds me of something we covered last week, uh, laptop emails that revealed Louis Free, the longtime director of the FBI, just dropped $100,000 into a trust fund for two of the Biden grandchildren as he was trying to get business with Joe Biden. Um, and he was going through Hunter Biden for that. So I think, don't you, would you say, Philip, that some of this is just basically becomes newsworthy because the Biden family has such a history of handling some transactions like this in a very questionable way. Yeah, Hunter Biden is an artist, but it's not in, in watercolors or oils. I mean, we've seen what's been on his laptop and he's very good at turning influence around. He never had to win a vote, but he's still capable of using his last name to get on the boards of companies to secure uh, favors and, and special uh, special treatment. Uh, this is this is no surprise here uh, that he suddenly found a way to use a market that by its nature is subjective, that it's going to be difficult for you to decide whether or not uh, this painting is, is worth, you know, a hundred bucks or half a million. And the reason is, is because it's art 
that uh, you know is in the eye of the beholder. I, I think that the, the system that's set up right now is um, you know that the the eyes of the beholders are, are more likely than not going to be people who are trying to figure out a way to get uh, you know say an Oval Office interview or even something more mundane, maybe um, you know a call into some administrative agency. Uh, this is a uh, distinct to high heaven. Rich coming from a man who once used his last name to try to get a discount from a cashier at a Wegman grocery store. And I tried spectacularly. <laughs> uh, it failed. It failed. That, 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 never go back. that didn't work. They didn't have a Wegmans button <laughs> for you. But the, I mean, this, this, this to me, the word gaslighting is, is overused. Uh, but, but hearing this defended as uh, on the up and up, as, as something that an art dealer is, go is going to vouch for the legitimacy of, mm -hmm. feels like an actually legitimate use of the term gaslighting. Because like you said, using, using art for this is brilliant. Art, art has been, uh, for, for decades now, uh, a, a place that ol oligarchs, uh, drug traffickers, uh, you know, other corporate executives who have a need to shuffle money in, in ways that, the, that they don't want the government to be able to follow, they use, they use the art mm -hmm. market. They use, they, they use this, this opaque network of, of, com of completely, uh, like, like you said, it, it, it's impossible to say whether something's worth $500 or $500,000. Right. And so if you want to hide wealth, uh, you, can, you can buy something that is worth $100 million, and then you can get some art experts, say that's actually worth $3,000, and then boom, you're, you know, you don't, you're not paying taxes on that. It's, 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 a, spe it's a spectacular innovation of, of the global uh, black market. To see it kind of transported into our, into our politics is, is quite impressive in, in, a, in a really devious way. And so spe speaking at CPAC this weekend, uh, Donald Trump Jr. Uh, weighed, weighed in on the matter. I'll do some Don Jr. artwork. I'll put up a nice little piece of paper Maybe I'll break out my AR, I'll shoot a smiley face into it. <laughs> and I'll sell it to half a million dollars to people in China who are probably influencing our government, you know, because that's probably what's happening, right? How do we get what we want in the Democrat Party? Just buy Hunter's art. Like, okay, <laughs> like speaking of gaslighting, are you kidding me? Like this, this is a guy whose who's fortune, the Trump Organization's fortune, rests on basically what the New Yorker called a, money, a global money laundering scheme. But isn't this a good example, though, of how Democrats that want to latch on to all of these various issues with Donald Trump, they cannot successfully <laughs> land those punches because they're wrapped up in the same influence peddling. Philip, can you speak to the sort of political expediency um, or maybe even the political gift that the Biden administration is giving the right by allowing this to happen during Joe Biden's presidency. But I think it's a gift that the right might squander, right? Because uh, Don Jr. is not the guy you want out there talking about uh, good <laughs> government. He's not the guy who you want out there talking about uh, ethics and keeping things above board. Uh, see example one through 20, and those are all well documented. Uh, I think that, you know, this is bad on its face. Uh, but you need a certain messenger to condemn it. Um, but, you know, to, to Ryan's point a second ago, when it comes to gaslighting, uh, I think that this is a very good example of why the media needs to be, you know, very careful with their reputation. If you come out in 2016, 2017 with this, the truth is, is more important now than ever nonsense. And then you uh, treat uh politician A differently than politician B, when you have an egregious example like this, um, you know, you, you are going to be in a world of trouble. You need to, you know, treat the people you cover the same, regardless of their beliefs. And uh, I think that, you know, um, what's, what's heartening here is that the clip that you played of Jen Psaki at the beginning of the uh, segment, she was responding to a question not from some smaller print outlet. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm not wrong, she was responding to a question from CBS News because this is, this is beyond uh, something that can be sort of looked past. And I think that it's encouraging to see you know, bigger outlets say, wait a minute, um, you know, uh, life is short art is long and influences forever, right? I mean, like, this is, this is ridiculous. Right, but at the same time, I think it was outlets like that's decision not to cover the Hunter Biden scandal the last time around. Absolutely. Kind of em emboldened this to happen this time around. And I, and I also think that Don Jr. on stage there, he's sort of joking, yeah. but at the same time, he's like, God, 
wish I had thought of that. Like, and, and as he's like, and as he's doing his bit there, I, when he went off the stage, I, uh, how do I pull this off? Like, how do I actually do this? I like, I, ha I hadn't, hadn't thought of this. It's pretty brilliant. I mean, using the art world for money laundering is a, a time honored tradition um, for the, the sort of top tier, but it's also to, to make that happen in the, the politics of a presidential administration is pretty next level. This is also a guy, Don Trump Jr., who, want, who once said about Hunter Biden, imagine if I went around using my last name to profit like Hunter is doing. This <laughs> Not exactly a display of self-awareness. Um, <laughs> what, what would that even look like? Uh, Philip, thank you so much for your time and for not using your name to try to influence us um, as the heir to the Wegman grocery store fortune. I have, I have two N's in my name. Wegman only has one. And one time I went to a grocery store and it was late and I was like, my name is, is Wegman. And they were very <laughs> impressed. So that's uh, Thank you, Philip, and thank you for flying solo, obviously, as we had issues connecting with Colin this morning. But next on Rising, journalist Zed Jelani discusses Kamala Harris's remarks on rural voters. Stay tuned. You won't want to miss it.